Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today I've got a nice problem from the 2015 Turkmenistan Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find, without calculus, the maximum and minimum of this function. So it's f of x equals the square root of x plus 4 times the square root of 1 half minus x. And one thing I really like about this problem is that it's going to force us not to use calculus, which if you're a common viewer of the channel, you know that I kind of like to overuse the tool of calculus on these types of problems. Okay, before we jump into the solution, I'd like to say that it's based off of some things that I saw in an art of problem solving thread. I'm sure that you could find that thread pretty easily if you try. Okay, so let's get into the solution. So what we're going to do is make some sort of substitution that will simplify these radicals to expressions without radicals. And this is maybe inspired by something that you might do in an integral calculus class when you are doing a trigonometric substitution. That being said, we won't be using calculus, we'll just be using some trigonometric identities. Okay, so let's go ahead and set x equal to the sine squared of theta over 2. And you might say, well, why do we want to do that? And that's because with this, we have 1 half minus x is the same thing as 1 minus the sine squared of theta over 2. But 1 minus sine squared of theta is exactly the cosine squared of theta. So we have this is the cosine squared of theta over 2. And that actually makes this a lot easier to work with because we take the square root of the cosine squared and we get the cosine. And you might say, well, we really get the absolute value of the cosine, but because of the domain restriction that's put on to this function in the first place, x has to be between 0 and 1 half, we don't have to worry about an absolute value there. Okay, so let's maybe see what our function looks like now. So now we have f of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the sine of theta. That's our square root of x term. And then we'll have 4 times the square root of this. So that's something like 4 over the square root of 2 times the cosine of theta. So now we want to maximize something like this. And the way that we'll maximize something like this is be inspired by an angle sum formula for the sine function. And in particular, what we want to do is find numbers a and alpha where we have f of x is equal to a times the sine of theta plus alpha. And if we can do that, then it's easy, well, it's easy just to pick out the maximum and the minimum of this function f of x. Okay, well, let's recall what our sum angle formula is and set up an equation. So I'll kind of do this all at once. I will expand this guy using my sum angle formula and I'll set it equal to this expression for f of x that I've underlined both of them in orange. So that's going to leave me with something like a times the sine of theta times the cosine of alpha plus a times the cosine of theta times the sine of alpha. So that's my expansion of my sum angle formula is equal to one half times the sine of theta. Sorry, one over the square root of two plus four over the square root of two times the cosine of theta. And now we're going to use something that may sound a little bit technical, but I think it's okay. So now we'll use the fact that cosine of theta and sine of theta are linearly independent functions. And what does that allow us to do? That allows us to set the coefficient of the sine of theta, which I'll underline in red, equal to each other on the both sides of this equation. And furthermore, we can set the coefficient of cosine of theta on each side of this equation equal to each other. So that gives us the green underlined equation as well as the red underlined equation. So notice the green underlined equation is a times the sine of alpha is equal to 4 over the square root of 2, whereas the red underlined equation is a times the cosine of alpha is 1 over the square root of 2. 
But where can we go from there? Well, maybe we would take both of these equations and divide them. And so notice the a's will cancel and that'll leave us with sine over cosine or the tangent of alpha equals four. That's what happens if we divide the two right-hand sides. But that means that our angle alpha is in fact the arctan of four. But now we can complete a triangle with this angle and easily find the sine and the cosine of this angle. So let's do that. So here's my right triangle. I'll say that this is angle alpha. So that means we have a measurement of four for this side and one for that side. Maybe pay no attention that it really should be longer in the other direction. This is just a mock-up. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, we get the square root of 17 for the hypotenuse. So now we can really just read off the value of the cosine and the sine. So the sine of alpha is four over root 17 because it's opposite over hypotenuse, whereas the cosine of alpha is one over the square root of 17 because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, but now we can loop that or maybe one of these like this into our equation right here. Maybe we'll loop it into this a times cosine of alpha equation. And what we'll see is that a is in fact equal to the square root of 17 over two, where that whole square root is in the denominator. And so again, that's just by plugging in cosine of alpha equals one over the square root of 17 and then solving for a. Okay, so that means we can take this value for A and plug it in up here. I'd now like to take just a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands, that's right, thousands of lessons on a variety of topics, ranging from simple to advanced. Brilliant offers courses on a swath of STEM fields, such as math, science, and computer science. Brilliant offers an interactive and unique take on learning with awesome hands-on puzzles and graphics to make learning fun. Recently, I've been enjoying their course on special relativity. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, put a comment down if you'd like me to do a video on special relativity. I think that'd be a nice crossover. So what are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Michael Penn or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And one more time, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so there we've got it. Now our function has this kind of neat structure as the square root of 17 over two times the sine of theta plus the arctan of four. And where would we go from here? So we know the maximum value of sine is one, so it stands to reason the maximum value of f of x is the square root of 17 over two. And that's exactly correct, so let's prove that via kind of a claim. So we'll say the maximum of f of x equals the square root of 17 over two. Okay, so let's see maybe how that would go. So I'll just say clearly, because the sine of anything is less than or equal to one, that implies that f of x is always less than or equal to the square root of 17 over two. Now we just have to find a value of x that achieves that maximum. And let's note that if we set, maybe I'll call it x naught equal to one half times the sine squared of pi over two minus arctan of four, then by our construction, that means that f of x naught is indeed equal to the square root of 17 over four. And why is that? That's because under our substitution, this means our theta plus alpha that we had before, in other words, our theta plus arctan of four is in fact equal to pi over two, but then sine of pi over two is equal to one. So we've achieved that maximum. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate the minimum, but we're gonna do that in a much shorter way and actually not using trig functions, just for a little bit of variety. So we just finished showing that the maximum of our function is equal to the square root of 17 over two. I fixed a bit of a typo that was on the last board.
So now let's calculate the minimum. And like I said, we're gonna do this a slightly different way. We're gonna do this by squaring our function f of x. And after squaring our function f of x, we'll look for a minimum value of the square of that function and use that to get a minimum value for our function using the fact that the square function and the square root function are both increasing. Well, they're increasing when the inputs are positive at least. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's calculate f of x quantity squared. So that's the square root of x plus four times the square root of half minus x squared. So multiplying that out will give us x plus 16 times one half minus x. So that would be the pure squares. And now we've got the cross term, which will be plus, let's see, this guy times this guy times two. So that gives us an eight out front. So we have eight times the square root of x times one half minus x. So now simplifying, we'll have eight minus 15x plus eight times the square root of x times one half minus x. And now notice that this stuff that I'm underlining aligning in orange is decreasing. So if we're going for the minimum value, we wanna plug in the largest possible value of x as possible. And then furthermore, notice that the minimum value of this is equal to zero. That's because it's a square root function and it occurs at x equals one half and then again at x equals zero or x equals zero and then again at x equals one half. And then putting these two facts together, the fact that this is decreasing and the fact that this equals zero at these two places, tells us that we should choose the x equals one half value in order to achieve our minimum. So that means our minimum of this squared function is achieved at x equals one half. So that means we're looking for f evaluated at half squared. That ends up being eight minus 15 over two, which is one half because it's 16 over two minus 15 over two, which means the minimum value of f of x is the square root of that. In other words, one over the square root of two. So now we have found the minimum value as well as the maximum value. Uh, furthermore, we found where the maximum value was achieved and where the minimum value was achieved. And I hope you like this problem. If you haven't yet subscribed, maybe now is a good time to subscribe. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.